We all can agree that 60 years ago, and that is in 1962, the word ICT was not commonplace in Uganda. Uganda attained independence. Technology was not very advanced. You recall those days, uh, even transport, whether by road, by water, by air, even uh, other forms of communication, were still not well developed. For instance, in the 60s, up to the 80s, we only had Radio Uganda, which we call UBC today, but there was only one radio in this country. In this interview, the Minister in Charge of Information, Communication and National Guidance, Dr. Chris Bayomosi, recollects some sector memories. So in terms of ICT, in terms of digital technologies, in terms of communication, a lot has been registered in the last 60 years. Actually, if you brought people who, God forbid, passed away in the 60s, uh, if there was to be a miracle and they come back today and they see how Uganda is, probably they wouldn't recognize it. They wouldn't know that this is the Uganda we left because a lot has changed. According to Minister Dr. Chris Bariomosi, the ICT sector has greatly improved over the years and now acting as one of the economy's drive. In the area of IT, we now speak of the fourth industrial revolution with many cutting edge technologies which are coming on board. And as a government and as a ministry of ICT, we are now investing resources to see to it that Uganda runs fast and catches up with the rest of the world. And for the country's communication field, a lot has also been attained. The national broadcaster has also undergone a lot of positive transformation and uh, it began as black and white analog but with this digitization agenda which is global UB, our own ubc has since transformed and i'm sure the viewers who have been uh, the hair and clients of ubc have seen it grow that now UBC has one of the best pictures compared even to the private uh, TV providers. And the quality of broadcasting, uh, the reach, how far it can reach. Uh, I think the national broadcaster, the name of UBC, has also greatly, greatly transformed Besides facilitation of transformation of the national broadcaster, the communication trends have also been improved. Say on agriculture, on health, while the others, with the due respect, may be focusing on business and probably making money to thrive in the market, UBC has remained one channel that focuses on educating a Ugandan on liberating a Ugandan, and that's what makes it tick. The same with the radio. When you listen to the news, the news hour, and uh, how it covers the information from all around the country, because sometimes some media houses may want to focus on uh, what they think makes the news and is sensational and it's from urban areas, but the uh, UBC, the national broadcaster, as a deliberate policy, make sure that it picks information from all corners of the country. Another sector which has also tapped into the ICT era is that of education. We have built our own capacity as a country. That's why we have many universities which teach IT courses, which teach computer science. And now we have very many graduates who are coming out of universities. And we are now supporting them and we want to support them more to see that they put their skills, their competences, which they have acquired in universities, into practical interventions. With the million steps taken, government is committing itself to make more investments in the ICT sector. And as a government, we are going to invest more in the technology because 
technology is now the resource that facilitates transformation. But then how did that generation survive amid this disgust of such technology? So when we were growing up, post office was the only thing in terms of delivering messages, delivering parcels and items. But now, most of the services which were initially delivered by post office have been taken over courtesy of technology. While those days I would have to write a letter to send it to my people in the village, now I can send them a WhatsApp message. As we continue to embrace the ICT revolution, plans to revamp the post offices are also underway. We are in a discussion to transform our postal offices all over the country into government service delivery points where there are many documents that the government processes for its citizens, i.e. a passport, a national identification card, a land title, a driving permit, and all these. We are now saying, instead of somebody traveling from Karamoja, from Chigezi, from West Nile, to come and pick a passport from Kampala, we are now transforming these postal offices into centers where you can make applications for all these services online. It is now anticipated that if government accords maximum attention to the ICT sector, especially for the next 60 years ahead, millions of jobs, opportunities and revenue are expected as the end results. Robert Nyong'o, UBC News. Yes, sir. Yes, sir.